How many of y'all know that freedom is in the house this morning? That liberty is in the house this morning? Because Jesus is in the house this morning. So I just want everybody to release the sound this morning, a sound of freedom. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before.
No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. You see, I know four years ago this month, God set me free. So this is my song this morning. I said, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Somebody ought to remember when God set you free. You said, no more, no more, no more shackles, no more shackles, no more chains. No more bondage. I am free. You see when the hell glory comes in, he does like this. No more shackles. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Say no more, no more, no more shackles. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. The King of Glory has set me free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free.
he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, for he is my song. Cause you are
season, every circumstance, you're good. Never once you fail me, Lord. Oh, cause you are, you are, you are good. You are good, Lord. sing this song as a declaration for his sons and daughters and this is a season where our faith will be ignited but we can say it as well we'll set our eyes on you holy father it is well with us lord far 
Somebody make that declaration right now. It is well with my soul. Through everything that you've been through right now, just go ahead and say it. Come on, just begin to declare it over your household right now.
It is well. 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 Can you just say that and believe it this morning, that through it all, that your eyes will be on him, through the storms, through the, through the awesome times, through the difficult times, through the obstacles, when it's boring and on the challenge, can you say that through it all, my eyes are on him and that it is well with my soul? And if you can't feel that right now, just say it till you do. Just begin to declare that over your life right now. Begin to declare it over your household. Begin to declare it over your family. Begin to declare it over your situations and circumstances. Just say it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. And you can't help but see the Holy One in the midst of that. You can't help but turn your eyes on Jesus. You can't help but focus on the Holy God. say it is well with my soul. Let's just declare it. Let's just believe that when we as carriers of the presence of the Most High God begin to speak over our life situations and our life circumstances that it has to line up. It has to line up with the kingdom and the king. Let's believe it this morning that it is well with our souls. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise as you're seated this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. God is good. He is in this place, and I love his presence. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning. I am Pastor Michael, and despite my promotion last night at the Clegg's reception, uh, my wife and I are executive pastors here at Epic Church. And uh, uh, for those of you who weren't here, we just celebrated the uh, reception of the Cleggs. They're joining Re Rebecca and Justin. Uh, they came back in Tex from Texas to have a um, reception before they went out to their honeymoon. And so we wish them the best in our prosperous future and, uh, and, and great enjoyment uh, during their time away to celebrate their marriage. So it was great. Uh, thank you all for being here, and I'd like to invite your attention to the screens for some church news. Good morning, Epic family and guests. Thank you for joining us today. Here is what's happening here at Epic Church. Good morning, Epic Church. Go ahead and pull out your phones and check in on Facebook. You can share with the world what God is doing here and in Lakeland. All church prayer will be Tuesday at 6.30. Come join us as we pray for our church, community, and the world. The second summer worship night's coming up July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Join us once again as we gather for a time of worship and intercession. Epicenter Arts is underway. It's not too late for you to be a part of changing our community one heart at a time. Visit the Epicenter Arts table in the lobby to find out how you can impact this generation. And now, back to the service. Good morning, Epic Church. Morning. Amen. You know, the buzzword is freedom. For the month of July, in fact, I put it on my calendar, freedom. 
you know. And for the month of July, we, we, the, the theme is freedom, and everybody talks about it. But, you know, I want to talk to you about a, a freedom that only comes with God. I'm going to give my testimony. It's offering time, so you can go ahead and say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? But, you know, but the thing is, when I, I got saved in 74, and so for two years, I was, up, I was in New Jersey for two years. When, when he saved me, he saved my wallet. Saved my, my, he saved everything about me. I was, I was ready to give the house away, the car away. It didn't matter what God wanted. I was fully engaged. And so for two years, that's the freedom I had. Go up to the, you know, go away, just happy. Well, I moved back upstate, New York, and uh, my friends got around because they noticed that every time offering time came along, that I would just dump everything. I would just like dump it all. And, and so afterwards, when we went out to have coffee or whatever, they said, Stanley, you, you got to stop that. You, you got to have money for bills. You got to, you know, you got to stop dropping your whole check, you know, or whatever you have in, on the offering plate. And here, it's like this. Back then, we didn't have card, credit cards. I mean, in fact, I remember my dad went for, a, for an offer. He wanted to get a loan for $300, and they denied him. And he had a job. So, we, you know, we, we, we're going, I'm going back on you now. All right, we didn't have credit cards, so it wasn't like I could put all the money in and then get my, you know, my card out and pay for donuts and stuff. So they said, this is how you do it. From now on, when you go into church, you know, and you have, have your offering and your tithe in this pocket with your right hand. And then the money that you need for coffee and bills and things, you put it in, in that pocket because I didn't have a bank account. I was the bank account. Everything was in my wallet, in my pockets, right? So I started doing that. And I started going in, you know, giving the right hand of fellowship, you know, just pull it out, you know. And all of a sudden I realized that I really hadn't taken time out to find out what God had to say about giving. So my best friend was able to tell me how to do it, and it just changed everything for me because all of a sudden now I'm thinking about, you know, I'm just thinking about pennies and giving them to the penny instead of rounding it off. I used to round it off, you know. I started giving them pennies, and my freedom was gone. Well, my wife and I, we went to this conference, and at the conference they started talking about money. So I had, I had already thought, I've got it down pat now. I, I know give offering, tithing, things like that. But they, they threw a twist in there. They said, listen, when you give your tithe, it should be from your gross amount and not your net. Oh, and I, I'm, I'm furious now because I had God all figured out and I knew from friends that this is how you do it, right? So my wife and I, we had this friendly argument. I lied. We had this argument about finances. We're on our way home, you know, from this conference, and I'm telling her, listen, it's not fair to have to pay tithe on money you never get. The, the government takes it. You know, they just take it. So we're arguing back and forth. And finally, there was a, there was a, on the radio, there was a message, and the man had to talk about offering. And at the end, I realized that what I had done is I had taken like the Pharisee did, that, that mint and anise, and they took off a part, and they would eat part of it and give the tenth, a little, little thing, but they forgot about mercy and faithfulness and forgiveness. And, and, you know, I started nitpicking. And I tell you, when you start doing that, and you don't look at God's word to find out how you can give and stay free, you're in bondage. And I'm telling you, Lord, I repented in that car. I repented the hope, first of all, for thinking I knew it all, you know. But I repented in that car. And ever since, it's been 40-something years now, I've been set free in my giving. God owns everything. He deserves all of me. And I, when I was doing that, I was free. But when I stopped and started, you know, cutting corners and figuring out this is what I'll do and I won't do that, then I got rid of that left-hand pocket, put everything back over here, and I said, Lord, whatever you choose for me is what I want. And I want you to know that's the freedom that we have. We don't have to give, but I'm free to give. You see what I mean? I don't have to pay, but I'm free to pay. And I love that freedom because that freedom goes not only there, it goes free to worship. Free to praise him, free to love him, free to love you all. That's a freedom that I have, not, a, not, not something that comes automatic. It's a freedom, and I exercise my freedom. So freedom, say freedom. So get your tithe out and look at it and say, I'm free to give. You're offering, I'm free to give. Now here at, Mount, here at I was going to say Mount Zion, here at Epic Church, here at Epic Church, we bring our tithe first. Because we believe that God, God needs to know that we believe that this is non-negotiable. It's a tenth of all that we've made. And we come down with joy. So why don't you get up and come on down to give your tithe. No more shack, no more shack, no Say freedom more shame, when you get down here. No more freedom. Go ahead, tell them free. Yeah. Freedom. No more, no more, yeah. no more shack, no, no more no shack.
Now, at this time, I want you to get your offering on. Now, you're free to do the moonwalk. You, you can do the running man. Whatever you want to do to get down here to give God your offering with cheerfulness. Come on down and do it. Let's be free. Freedom. No yeah. more shackles. No more shackles. No more chains. No yeah. more bondage. in our giving, Lord. You, you've set us free from the love of mammon, the love of money, and we just love you, Father. It's just you. You deserve all the glory and the honor and the praise. Father, today we're asking, Lord, that as we give what it is that you've asked us to do, Lord, you do what you said you would do. You gave us reason why we should give. You would open up the windows so we would not have room enough to receive, that you would cause others to give under our bosom, press down, shaken together, and run it over, Lord. We want the overflow. Hallelujah! We're free! We need you, Lord! We need you, Lord! Bless this offering. Make it fruitful. Make it abound much more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, Amen! Oh, we got to put our little children. Come on. No more, no more bondage. No more change. God is good, amen. He's just so great. He's so great all the time. It is just wonderful to know a God, know the God, and love him and trust him, amen. I'd like to thank Nate Flory. He uh, made this podium, new podium. Took him about two weeks to make it. Uh, just out of the love and appreciation of his time here at Epic, he's been with us about four years and walked through a lot of stuff, and we've been there with him through it all, and so he just made this uh, in appreciation of all that Epic is to him, and so we're just grateful for that and uh, for this gift, and it's, uh, it's really nice. I like it. It's pretty, really pretty. Awesome, awesome. Also, for our Dream Team, we have our Dream, Dream Team Connect this Saturday from 6 to 8. So, hope to see you here. We'll be over in Legacy. It'll be just a great time. We have some fun and games, and we have some food there, and uh, just words of encouragement, and some announcements, and things like that. So, it's a really good time for all those who are on the Dream Team. We just want to make sure you're there and it, know that you are invited, and it is this coming Saturday, and it's from 6 to 8. So, hope to see you there for that. Um, over the try to read through my Bible every year, and uh, this this week I, I was reading a little bit in Hebrews, and uh, it's uh, interesting that uh, I start off with you know reading it at the end of chapter twelve in Hebrews, where it talks about our God is a consuming fire, and I'd like to talk to you guys about that today. My God, the consuming fire said it several times over the past few months and maybe even over the past year that I really believe that God is sending a shaking to this earth and it is the unshakable things that remain. It is the unconsumable things that remain and when he comes through with his consuming fire and he begins to shake the earth, it is the kingdom things that we have implemented and intertwined into our spirits and hearts that remains and keeps us unshakable when everything else around us is shaking. And so I believe that he is uh, preparing his people by shaking them first and getting them to get all the unshakable things out of them and all the things that are consumable out of them so that when the global shake happens, we'll be unshakable right in the midst of it. We'll be the peace right in the midst of the storm and that's going to gather all kinds of attention and they're going to say, why aren't you shaking? And you'll say, let me tell you who can help you with that and we'll be able to direct them and be lights and so as I was reading through that scripture again I found myself at the end of, of Hebrews 12 understanding that God is the consumer and let's just read it together there in, in Hebrews 12 28 it says therefore since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken 
Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. As I begin to think about that and owning my own business, there's a phrase that I use um, when I'm talking to other entrepreneurs or those who own businesses and things like that to encourage them. And not that this is, uh, you know, illegal or mean or anything like that or, or that it's not taking emphasis off of God or that we're willing to compromise our morals and ethics. But there's a, a saying that I repeat over that when the clients pay, they say. And so whatever it is that they say, that as long as they're willing to pay, they get what they say. And so if today they want the door over here and tomorrow they want the door over here, that's what we do because when they pay, they say. And so obviously I'm not going to compromise morals or anything like that, but it's to get an understanding that I'm not the one in charge. They are the one in charge, but I have the skill set to accomplish that which they want accomplished. And so reading through that and understanding that, I had this great revelation in my own life, understanding that I'm not the consumer in the relationship with God. I thought I was the consumer. I thought I come into church because I'm down and out and I need to be uplifted and I need to be encouraged and I need to be filled from all the things that have happened this week and all the burdens that I've been bearing and just the, the hard work of the cross is just, is just bearing down upon me and I can just barely make it to the footsteps of the church and just kind of roll into the sanctuary and barely get my hands up enough and if I can just do it, and I can begin to participate into this corporate anointing that all will be right with the world. And so I'm here so that I can get God can, can bless me and can pour out things on me and I can get my the healing that I need and I can get the encouragement that I need and the peace that I need and the joy that I need. And I realized that he's the consuming fire. I'm not a consuming fire. He's the consumer. I'm the store owner. This vessel is the store. And he wants to come into the store. But he's only going to come into a store that has what he wants in it. And I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> well, I come to be ministered to, so now how do I come to church and minister to you? How do I live a life that ministers to you? I'm thinking that I, I need all these things, and my God's going to supply all my needs, and I can do all things and all of these things, and that's what I go to church for, so that I can get these things. And, and I go through the store of the kingdom, and, I, you know, they've got 11 flavors at the Serpy Station, so I can kind of mix and match and make my perfect mix. And I can grab a couple of bags of Cheetos or Lay's or whatever it is that I like, or maybe some boiled peanuts or something along those lines or open up the cooler and get my favorite beverage out and do that and then throw a couple of bucks on the counter on the way out you know that we so we pay for it through our prayer or our attendance to church or sometimes our obedience or you know whatever it is that we feel like we need to extra prayer time extra reading of the word or maybe listening to a couple of sermons or things like that we just kind of tip God or put a couple of dollars in the offering basket or something like that so that we can pay for the goods that we bought when we were the consumers in the kingdom. And it occurred to me that there is no kingdom store. We're the kingdom store. And we've got to start stocking up on inventory that the king wants so that the king is going to start dwelling in our store instead of going somewhere else where it's not helping me anything. Now first, what do we have to do to do this? We have to ask. It all starts with ask. At the very foundation of the word ask is we find our salvation. We ask God to come into our heart, be the savior of our lives, cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can live for him forever and, and have a place to go in eternity. So it ver starts very simply in the beginning. How do we minister to God? How do we begin to allow him to be the consumer in our lives? Is that we then be first begin to ask of him, God, I need you to come into my heart. We start there and then we move on to the place. Now what do you want in my heart? And we begin to fill it up because the way it works is we've been shopping around and following the five laws of consumership where it's uh, based on location. Uh, is it convenient? 
Are the prices right? Uh, do, is, does it have variety that I need? And does it have the things in it that I need? And so we, we, we cho- choose our church that way. We choose the, the avenues and pathways of our life for our businesses and, and our work. And we choose it based on those factors of con- consumership. Well, it works the same way with God. Now realizing that he is the consumer, he's going to go where he has the most variety. He's going to go where, he, where it, it's not going to be much effort for him to go. He's going to go into those places that are prepared for him. Now, I read all kinds of manuals and self-help things about, you know, one-minute millionaire and multiple streams of income and uh, the, the accidental billionaire and, you know, rich dad, poor dad and all those different series to try to get and understand the mind uh, of the wealthy to see how it is that they think maybe that I can add those characteristics to, or, and habits to my lifestyle to change the way I think about things, to set myself free so that I can be in a place to bless and, and and walk in prosperity even more so than I already do. And in one of those books, there was a story about two store owners. Uh, the store owners had just opened up in town, and uh, the, the store owner had fully stocked everything and got everything ready like it, was need, it, it needed to be and opened it up. Had a customer come in there and ask the owner, said, well, do you have any of these specific items? And, and the store owner's like, no, we don't sell any of that here. So the customer went out of there, and the, the never returned or anything because the store didn't have anything that that customer wanted. Now, the other store, the customer went in and says, well, you know, I I like what you have here, but do you have this, this, and this? And the store owner says, oh, they're actually on order, and uh, we'll have them. We can have them overnighted if you need, or uh, we'll have them here within, you know, 10 days or so, uh, and uh, you're welcome to shop around for anything else that you need. Now, that order had not been placed, and of course, wanting to appeal to the consumer, he then places an order for those items and began to stock his store based on the needs of the consumers in that area. And so as a result of that, his entire inventory changed because it changed from what he thought his community needed to now what his community actually was asking for. And so what we have to do as store owners of our vessel, we have to begin to find out what it is that the Holy Spirit wants and begin to ask of him what it is that he wants in the store so that we can then begin to stock what he wants so that he is frequently visiting our store and frequently visiting our vessel so that we can move forward with everything that he has called us to. So once we ask, we must believe. We usually only ask things of people that we believe. And so often we don't ask God first. We usually ask him last after all of our other resources have failed and been exhausted. But we ask who we believe. And so when we begin to ask God for what we need or what he wants in, we believe that what he tells us is the truth. And so that's why we ask people that we only believe. And so that next part of asking and understanding how to minister to God is moving from asking to believing. We find in Romans 10, 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Acts 16, 31, same thing. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. This was after the jail had begun to shake and Paul and Silas changed and fell off and the guard was about to kill himself and he's like, "Uh, don't kill yourself, we're all still here. And he's like, what must I do to be saved? And it's believe. The next thing we do is we confess with our mouth. We say, God, what is it that you need? What do you want in here? I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, what else do you want in here? We ask him because we believe. Who you ask is who you believe. Who you ask is who you minister to. Because when you do what they say, it's like ministering to them. Because when we obey what God says, it's like ministering to him. He wants us to be obedient children. I am so proud as a father when my children do what I say. Because that means they believed me, they understood me, and they began to do what it is that I have taught them to do. And it worked for them. And I could not be prouder as a father at that moment. 
And so we ask who we believe. We ask who we minister to. Who is it that we're ministering to? to, to? Who are we asking of? Are we asking one that's going to be able to stock up our vessels in such a way that it's going to invite the presence of God? Or are we asking the one who we want in our vessel what he wants? So once we move from that place of asking and believing, we have to begin to stock up our vessel according to what he says. Now, I used to work at Publix when I was a kid, and uh, I I got promoted to part-time stockman. And there were two things that I absolutely loathed as a part-time stockman. One was inventory. Dear God, because it could only be done after hours, they would shut that store down, and we'd have to get out our little scanners, and we would have lists, and everybody had their own list and their pages on that list, and we'd have to scan and scan and scan and find and scour and dig. And I mean, on the little manifest, it would look, and it would say, uh, you're supposed to have five cans of something stupid like pine nuts, like little old, a little old carton of pine nuts that was like 50 cents, and it was supposed to be five of them, and we could only find three. Well, like, they would get on the intercoms like, we need to find pine nuts. Anybody see pine nuts? Everybody look in your area and find the pine nuts. And I'm like, dude, here's a couple bucks. Scratch it off the list. I bought the pine nuts. How about that? How about that? Just scan them off. We're done. I mean, my God, you're wasting hours of people's time. Like, we're, there's like 15 of us here for an hour looking for two cartons of pine nuts. Oh my gosh, get over the pine nuts, man. But what happens is, as we go through and God wants to do inventory in our lives, and he has given us a master manifest that says, you're supposed to have five portions of this, and ten portions of that, and two portions of this. So if you're low on mercy, you might want to start praying up a little bit and asking from the Holy One to say, I need a little bit of mercy, I'm running out. <laughs> I need to reorder from the source a little bit and get a little bit more. Some of us are a little short on love. Some of us are a little short on peace. Some of us are a little short on joy. Some of us need a little bit less of aggression in our life, (laughs) a little bit less frustration. And we begin to shift the things out and we look on this manifest and we begin to compare it to our vessel inventory. And we say, oh man, I got a bunch of things in here that's not on this list. Well, let's get start cleaning out right now. The other time that I really hated was when the statisticians, the business statisticians had come in and we had to rearrange the store because the statisticians had determined that people buy more groceries when they come in to buy what they want and the things to make what they want taste better are close by. We had to empty every shelf in that entire store and completely rearrange it based on these statistics that we were going to sell more groceries because of the way that it was put in the store. I'm like, what? You want us to do what? Move everything in the store? They're like, yep, you got to take this down, got to take this down, we got to move it. And we had to put everything on pallets, and the whole store was like empty. And I mean, it, we had, it was just tons and tons and tons of work because everything had to be reorganized so that the consumer can come in and have a better shopping experience. Sure, I want you to have a better time in my store. Okay. But I want God to have a better experience when he takes a stroll through my heart. I want him to have a better experience when he takes a stroll through my mind. I want him to have a better and easier experience when he strolls through my spirit and see what's going on in there. I want him to have a better experience. I want him to find what he wants and what he needs and everything else close at hand that support what he wants 
and what he needs. And so we need to begin to do inventory in our lives and begin to rearrange things in our hearts and minds that are of utmost importance to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've got to find a place in ourselves where we begin to do spiritual inventory based on what God has asked us to have in there so that he can be the consumer that we want in our lives. And no longer are we going into the kingdom and pulling what we want and using what we want and taking things and throwing a couple of bucks on the counter as we walk out with a, with a couple of thank you Jesuses, we really begin to realize that the kingdom is our supply house and our vessel is the place where God comes in and consumes. And we're not the consumer, he's the consumer. And we need to prepare a place that he likes to go to. And in that process, we need to begin to understand that we've got to shift our inventory around and make sure that we have the inventory of the kingdom. What is that inventory? I'm so glad you asked. In Acts, nope, Philippians chapter 4, hallelujah, verse 8. Finally, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. How many want God with them? This is the scripture to get God with you. You begin to change the inventory to think on the things that are lovely and pure and good report and noble. And if there's any virtue or there's any praise, then think on these things. If you can think about these things. And then as you begin to think about and reflect on all the things that Jesus did while he was here and the, and w the miracles that he performed and the attitudes that he had and the compassion and the love that he expressed in this earth, then we can begin to understand what kind of inventory we need to have in, in our vessel to move forward with what God wants us to do because Jesus was able to accomplish so much on this earth, a central figure that changed the entire known world at the time because of what he did and how he lived and the God of peace will be with us we need to begin to move into a place like Moses that says I'm not going anywhere without you God so whatever I have to change and whatever inventory I have to shift because you have need of me to do something and I've got to have everything in stock that you need so that you can use me in the way that you want to use me so that you can release what you want to release through me and trust me with the power that you've given Given me to speak life into this earth so that it can be changed into giving glory to you whether it be this nation this state this globe whatever it is God has released me and I'm only going to be able to do it if I've got stuff inside of me that draws the God of peace to do what it is that I'm supposed to do because we're in tragic times ladies and gentlemen look on the news Look on Facebook. We've got all kinds of tensions out there. We've got gender identity tensions. We've got racial tensions. And I want the God of peace. That's who I want. I want the God of peace that's going to walk me through every single one of these situations. Because I don't know what to say. I, I'm an idiot when it comes to stuff like this. I study and I read and I go through my sociology books and my psychology books and understand social norms and understand how things work and cultures and all of that stuff. And at the end of the day, it's like, I just need Jesus to figure this out because I, 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 have, I have nothing against anybody. I love. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to love. How can I love? How can I speak peace? How can I speak love? How can I speak joy into every situation? That's what I want to do. I don't know the rest of the stuff. He knows. I don't know. And I know what I can do. And I can pray. 
I can think on these things that are whatsoever are pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of good report, whatsoever is noble. Those are the things that I, be, I can begin to impart and begin to change stock on. Because what I have to do is I have to go to the supplier. And anybody knows that any store that buys any stock anywhere, what they want, they have different suppliers. Why? Because they want the cheapest they can get, the best they can get for the cheapest. And so you go to different pl- suppliers because we don't want it to cost much. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you that there is only one supplier for God has supplied all your needs according to his riches and glory. He doesn't run out of stock. He doesn't run out of inventory. It just costs a little more than it costs from the other suppliers. We go out and find out what this world has to offer and what our friends like Pastor Stanley told him to keep that left pocket available so that they could go out and donuts and coffee afterwards. But Pastor Stanley knew that his needs were supplied by the Most High God. God and it didn't matter and if God if God said to empty your right and left pocket that's what he did because God was the one who's going to make sure that when stock runs out that his left pocket was always going to stay full and he always supplies seed to the sower he's never left his children left for begging for bread they've never lacked any good thing and he continues to bless his people to those who continue to go to him for the source of all things we try to find peace through things that we do we find try to find joy through things that we do and the things that we make and the things that we try to make happen for ourselves and methods of escape we'll go out and go on vacation or we'll indulge ourselves or so in some way or whatever it is that we do to try to get out and find joy and find peace we'll meditate we'll get a massage although that feels great And we'll do all of these different things, but I'm telling you, the one that is the supplier of all things to the vessel store that is inside of you is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is that kingdom supplier that gives you things that never run out. And so we have to begin to go to the source of the king of kings to begin to supply the inventory that we need because he's laid it out for us here in Philippians 4. Now, we find ourselves next in Galatians chapter 5. Now, I'm very familiar with this scripture because, again, as a rebellious young man, uh, I had to write scriptures often, and this was one of those, the shorter the scripture, the more times I had to write it. So like the Lord's Prayer, I only had to write twice. Psalms 23, I only had to write once. Ten Commandments was twice. Uh, but this one I had to write five times because it was just a couple of verses here. Just because my mom wanted to beef up the produce section inside of me, okay? So this is the produce section of our store here in uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit... <laughs> is love and joy and peace is it up there oh god so i have to say it long suffering (laughs) It, it goes downhill right there that's where it starts it's like I peeked up right there, and it's like, yeah, long-suffering and everything else right after that moment right there. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And I'm telling you what, we don't like the things that aren't against the law. We like the things. It's in the prohibition, right? That's what, that's what we want to do. It's like we're, we're such a rebellious people. It's like we want to do what we're not allowed to do, and we don't want to do what we're forced to do. It's like total opposite. And the reason that I know that is that when in the beginning there were like a million rights, a million okays, a million things that we were allowed to do, and only one no, and that was don't eat this fruit. One no. Can you imagine one no? Oh my gosh, how easy is that? I'd have set the tree on fire and moved to the other end. I was like, yes, that's easy. There was no Bible to read. So it's not like I had to read my Bible every day and have devotions. It was, there was no Bible. There was, I, I, there was the sin of not reading my Bible. You know, we feel it's a sin. I can't read my Bible today, so I'm so sorry, Lord. But there was no Bible to read. Nothing. It was just like, hey, good morning, God. Let's walk through the garden today. That was it. That's all I had to do. He was like, boom, right here. We just walked around in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. One wrong thing. And it was like, oh, I got to do that one thing. 
Oh, oh yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta do that one thing now. <laughs> That's just what it is now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not, I have a million right things, but we got to do the one wrong thing that screws up all of humanity. <laughs> Dear God. So we got so many things, we don't even look at the things that aren't against the law. It's like, well, it's like, what can I do today that I need to do? <laughs> what is it I'm being forced to do today that I don't want to do? You know, it's all these things that we go through, and we need to begin to transition that inventory to the things that are against such there is no law. And we find these things here, the long-suffering and the kindness and the goodness, and we begin to look up that manifest, and we begin to compare what is actually in our vessel and what the, the master manifest says we should have it and we begin to transition those things and get the things out that need to get out, increase the things that need to be in so that the God of peace can dwell richly in us. We want the God of peace to come in and find everything he needs. You are sent here to bring revival to a nation, to a group of people, to a community, to your office, to your work, to the places that God has put you on path. He needs to be able to trust you with everything that's inside of you and every bit of power and authority that he wants you to have on this earth with the purpose that he's been given you. And he wants you to be able to take the people that he puts on your path no matter where that path leads whether it's church or home or work or on the way to and from those locations or wherever it is that you eat and he wants you to be able to minister to those people on your path and he doesn't want you to have anything in there that's going to be unhealthy to you or to them we've got to check our inventory ladies and gentlemen and we've got to get uh, we've got to change our supplier we got to get supplied from the Most High God who's going to have every good thing that we need. And then it doesn't stop there because what we don't need to worry about is worry about what somebody else has in their store. If they've got 10 portions of this and we've only got five, or they've got this and I don't have that at all, but I've got this and this person has this and all that kind of stuff, because let me just tell you something. If everything was a McDonald's, we'd be bored outside of our mind. We like variety. It's one of the important factors of the consumership. It's one of the five. We like variety. We like McDonald's and Burger King and Cheddar's and Mellow Mushroom and all these Arby's and Steak and Shake and Chick-fil-A closed on Sundays. <laughs> it's my pleasure. We like variety. We want things, and that's what God has created us to be. He's created us with beautiful things and uniqueness with inside of us, and he wants us to enjoy his creation. You were created in his perfect image. He created everything for our pleasure so that we can worship and minister to him through our obedience, through taking in all of the things that he's created us for. And so it doesn't matter if somebody has something that you don't have or a level of something that you don't have because that's not what you're called to. Because I trust me when I tell you, if they have 10 portions of grace and you have five, you don't want to walk the walk that requires 10 portions of grace. Please let me tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, I, you don't want it. If, if, if there's ten portions of mercy somebody else has and you got three, you don't want what it takes to require ten portions of mercy. There's going to be something that they've got to really, really let go. And I'm like, meh, I'm good with my three and whatever God has called me to. As long as it lines up with the master manifest, I'm good to go. I don't need any more than what he has for me because God has called me to a specific purpose and to a specific plan to accomplish a specific thing on this earth and that is to minister to him through my obedience to him and I do that by supplying myself with the one and true supplier who can only supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory and begin to put that stock inside of me so that the God of peace will dwell in me so that I can go and do all that he has called me to do. Amen. Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we declare a spiritual inventory that takes place in our hearts and our minds and our spirits today. Father, that you let us begin to overcome 
all the things that the world has put in our vessels and in our store and we begin to kick out and get rid of that inventory that does not belong there and does not do anything for the king or the kingdom father right now we begin to take the holy manifest that the holy spirit is beginning to deliver to us right now and begin to take that as spiritual inventory of what we need in our lives and right now that you would give us the strength lord to begin to ask for those things it is so difficult for us to ask so so often Lord Father that you would let our mouthpieces be unlocked and loosened so that we can liberally ask of you the gifts to all men liberally Lord Father right now we just ask that you begin to pour out your presence upon us and begin to give us the supply that we need so that we can change our inventory that is suitable and worthy of the presence of the most high God right now let your strength begin to rise through us let your your hope begin to rise through us. Let your peace begin to dwell inside of us, Lord, as we begin to increase the stock that you have called us to carry, Lord. Father, that our stores and vessels would be holy and acceptable to you in everything that we do. And that everywhere we go, we are going to minister to you and not be consumers, but to let you be the consumer, oh God. That nowhere will we go any longer to get and to get and to get and to be me and to be me and to be me and get my what, whatever, because that will be supplied through our obedience of changing the stock of our hearts and minds and spirits. Father, right now, we thank you for this revelation that you have given us today and that we would begin to change the inventory of our vessels now to be in alignment and agreement with the kingdom manifest right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and agree and shout out to God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. He wants you to be all stocked up. He doesn't want you to lack any good thing. He wants you to be full and ready to go. Hallelujah. And here at Epic Church, we believe in the power of prayer. We can pray the prayer of agreement with you if you just need some help. And prayer just overcoming the enemy and supplying your storehouse with what needs to be there. We can pray for sickness in your body or deliverance. If you need salvation or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have prayer ministry team and our ministry elders available up here to come into agreement and pray over your life because we believe that when we pray, it shall be done and will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. This area is open for you. For the rest of you, you feel released. God bless you and change somebody's life this week. Amen. Hallelujah.